Hello everyone and welcome to our 30-day Growth Challenge devotional. My name is Pastor Dave and I'm one of the pastors here at the Wayworld Outreach Church. Uh, today it's my pleasure and privilege uh, to share with you from the book of James in the New Testament. In James chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 2, James covers a multitude of topics. He covers and says to consider trouble as an opportunity for great joy. He says, if you're looking for wisdom, ask God. He says, God's word has the power to save our souls. And don't be a hearer of the word of God, but be a doer of the word of God. He finishes it off just before our study today with don't be judgmental or discriminate against people. So today we're going to be in chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. We'll be using the New Living Translation or the NLT. So let's read the scriptures first. It says, Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good, good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? So let's break it down a little bit. We're going to cover each, each of the verses here. But just to prep a little bit, I think we need to talk a little bit about this word faith. Uh, James immediately starts out in our lesson talking about faith. Now the word faith itself is used to express uh, that something that we actually believe in to be true. There are many people who have faith, uh, the general idea of faith anyway, meaning that they believe in something outside of themselves. Uh, and, and that it does exist, whether it is God or maybe an outcome that they expect or a path in their life or even a belief in science. There are even people who call themselves Christians that uh, believe that God exists, but that is as far as their faith ever goes. They believe that he is there, but that's just about it. Now, this type of faith is not what James is talking about. James is talking about what we'll call a saving faith which goes a lot deeper. Saving faith is not just a general belief in something or the existence even of God. Saving faith is a personal trust and confidence in the wonderful message of the gospel. Saving faith is found only, listen to this, only in the heart that says, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and he has saved me from my sins, from death and from the power of the devil with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Big difference there, isn't there? Saving faith is when we fully believe that Jesus died for our sins and rest in the promises that go with that. Saving faith tells us that no matter what we're experiencing, we are his, bought with a price. So let's look at these three verses just a little more closely now with that in mind. Verse 18 starts off, now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. James is simply saying, you have faith and I have works. Now the difficulty here is, is understanding what type of faith he's talking about. The someone James is referring to in this scripture are those that have faith, but not a saving faith. Now, in this verse, they are challenging James by saying that faith and works can exist separately. So James challenges them to demonstrate their faith without works. James knows that this is impossible because faith or saving faith is not a tangible entity, but can only be seen in its results. James offers to demonstrate his saving faith by his works. The only way others can know we have saving faith is by a life that demonstrates it. The works we do now demonstrate the change that has occurred because we have accepted Christ as our personal savior. We used to discriminate, but no more. We used to love a selected few, but now we love everyone. Places we used to go, we don't go anymore. It's just not for us anymore. Works are the outward proof of the reality of our faith. Our works tell people we're saved. 
They give outward expression to what would otherwise be invisible. Let's look at verse 19. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. Now here James is describing a man who has nothing but a profession of faith. No works to go along with it. He says he has faith, but there is nothing about his life that indicates it. This professed faith is nothing more than a mental agreement with fact. Makes sense. Such an agreement to the fact involves no committal to Christ and does not produce a transformed life. It's not enough to believe in the existing of God in order to be saved. Even the demons believe in God, but they can't get saved. You know, they shudder at the thought of their eventual punishment by him. The demons believe the fact, but they do not surrender to God. James demonstrates that it is possible to have faith, but not saving faith, without salvation. If your faith has not led to good works, then you do not have what we'll call saving faith. Verse 20 says, How foolish! Can you see the faith without good deeds is useless? You foolish fellow, James says. This person needs to recognize the seriousness of being in the same position as the demons. Faith without works is useless. The word useless has the idea of barren, sterile, or ineffective. Faith without works is not real faith at all. It is only a matter of words. James emphasized that we are not saved by faith of words only, but by that kind of faith which results in a life of good works. In other words, works are not the root of salvation, but the fruit. Works are not the cause of salvation, but the effect. When a person truly believes on the Lord, it, in, it involves a commitment of spirit, soul, and body. This commitment in turn results in a changed life. Faith apart from works is head belief and therefore dead belief. There are two basic and important facts that I want us to remember and we must keep in mind when we're studying the matter of faith and works as related to salvation. First of all, salvation is always apart from works. It's faith always apart from works. And we find that in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 that says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift of God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Second thing I want us to remember is that salvation by faith always results in works. Look at Ephesians 10. We're going to continue with the Ephesians here. It says, For we are God's masterpiece, you and I, who have accepted Him. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Why? So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. If you have saving faith, there will be works in your life. If there are no works, then your faith has not been saving faith. True faith and good works are inseparable. Luther wrote, Faith is a living, restless thing. It cannot be inoperative. We are not saved by works, but if there be no works, there must be something amiss with faith. It is quite impossible to separate works from faith as to separate heat and light from fire. Let me sum it up this way. Your works confirm who you are. Amen. I hope you enjoyed studying with me, James, the second chapter, verses 18 through 20. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, you're welcome to comment on this video and please share it with others. Let us pray before we leave. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone listening to this message, Lord. I pray for them, Lord, that that the, it gets down deep inside them, that your word just uh, and makes changes in their life. And Father, that as they show people who they are as being a Christian, Lord, they're showing it by their good work, works toward everyone out there. I pray for them in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next time.